we've always been open and honest about full-time RV life is not necessarily always butterflies and rainbows. <laughs> there are challenges with any kind of living choices. Today we're going to talk about 10 things that we think are good to consider if you're thinking about or maybe on the fence about full-time RV living. Hi, I'm Felix. And I'm Cindy. In 2019, we sold everything and moved into our RV full-time. Since then, we've been traveling the country following my nursing contracts. On this channel, we hope to help others find their path to full-time RV living. We, we are, are the Roaming Gomes. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. For those of you new around here, I'm Felix. And I'm Cindy. And we are the Roaming Gomes and we have some big news. We have a new grandchild. A son. Born to my son Jason and his partner Casey on May 1st at, I think they said 6.36 a.m. He came in in a big rush. Yeah. That, <laughs> they almost didn't make it to the hospital. This baby is coming, Alex. Ah. Uh. Um, his name, Elliot Cooper Gomes. And we couldn't be happier and prouder. Glad mom and baby are doing well. And welcome to the family. Um, that makes 10 grandchildren between us. I didn't stop and count. I didn't realize it was that many. Yeah, you have four from your previous marriages and, and kids. And I have six. Each of my three children has had two children now. Wow. And you know what? That's kind of a, a part of what we're going to talk about in this week's video. And it's basically 10 things you want to consider before be, uh, becoming full-time. And these 10 things, if you can't accept pretty much any one of them, then full-time RV life might not be for you. Number 10 on our list is expecting RV full-time living to be constant excitement. That's what you see on Instagram. That's what you see on Facebook. That's what you see on sometimes on YouTube and various platforms that it's always this beautiful open field with flowers and we're laying out a blanket and having a picnic. And or, or, you know, like there's water and mountains. <laughs> <laughs> or it's going hiking or going skiing or going there's always something exciting going on that's not usually the everyday full-time rv living life um there you still have to wash your clothes you still have to go grocery shopping do the dishes clean em empty the black tank yeah. all, all the things that you would do at home in addition to the black tank because i mean and that's something a point that needs to be made too is that you're not, if you're a full-timer, you're not on vacation. Yeah. So there, because we travel, we are exposed to things that we can do that are different than if we lived in a house in one spot. That's not the everyday occurrence. We'd be worn out if we tried to do that every day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you We're do too have old to, for that. <laughs> you do have to be realistic in that every day is not an adventure and that there are adventures involved but it's not every single day of life because it's life and you still have to do your normal everyday kind of mundane chores and things that have to be done number nine if you rely on consistent and constant medical care if there's something that you have to go to your doctor every week or, or every couple of weeks like like your mom with, mm -hmm. with her diabetes or if you're on some kind of infusion maybe chemotherapy or some other sort of thing that you have to be seen by someone frequently you're not going to have your doctors available to you if you're out traveling full time and i don't want that to be something that stops you from considering full-time rv living hopefully you can get past that point where you have to go to the doctor every week or, or so on and so forth, the infusions. Um, and maybe then would be the time to look into it. And in the meantime, maybe just weekends or holidays or something, you could try out that this life 
Absolutely. on a part-time and, basis. Yeah, and, and that's something that probably everybody should do before they go full hog into full-time <laughs> RV life. Not like we did. Not like we did. <laughs> uh, remember, a lot of these things that we do, we've done them so that you don't. <laughs> <laughs> True. If you are the kind of person that has a very tight-knit social life, a tight-knit group of people that you do a lot of things with, that you are um, constantly getting them over to your house, you're going to their house, and these people are like your chosen family, you may want to consider whether that's going to fit in with full-time RV life because the social life of being a full-time RVer is very transient and it's very can be short-lived. Although you can make friends and see them again. We one guy we were neighbors with back in 2020 and he came back in 2023 and we were able to reconnect with him. But most of the time when we see people the birds are having a good time out here. Um, <laughs> most of the time when we get to know people or see people on a regular basis at one spot, once we leave or they leave, we probably will never see them again. But you can stay in touch on social media and phone, of course. And... <laughs> the birds here are very vocal. <laughs> yeah. So, um, that your social life is something that you need to take into consideration. If you can't be without your your network of friends physically being together that that would be a drawback of being able to go full-time in your rv number seven if you dream of a nice beautiful garden and a backyard and that's really all you want out of life well then full-time rv life's probably not going to be for you some people are avid gardeners. They are either with flowers or some kind of shrubberies and they are very proud of their manicured lawns and and vegetable gardens and flower gardens. Yeah, their wildflowers or whatever it is. Oh, and that's perfectly fine. It's just that that's something that you won't really have any access to. You can do vegetables like uh, in pots for in pots for a short period you know whatever time you're going to be at one place uh, we are in in one spot usually at least three months and sometimes six sometimes longer but we would have to take that into consideration you know what would be growing during that season that we are in that in that place and in that season and more times than not that's just going to be decorative flowers we're not going to be growing tomatoes or <laughs> any of that um, but if, if that's something that you really can't live without, then a, the full-time RV life might not be for you. Because unless you, and we, we really don't think of stationary RVers as full-time RV lifers. That's, they're just living in a different kind of house. Yeah. You know? Um, but if, you, if you're a full-time RVer and you're gonna be moving, you're going to be doing without a garden or, or a big, not necessarily without a big backyard, because depends on where you are. Yeah, and you you can, I mean, the whole park is basically your backyard. <laughs> but yeah, think about that before you consider full time life. Number six, you also have to consider how living in a very small space with your loved ones is going to affect your relationships. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's different when you have a home that you can go in another room and have your space and say, I'll talk to you in a little while or I need some space or whatever it is. It, in an RV, normally there's not really the luxury of that in that you are in a small space. Our first RV, there was no separate room at all. No. It was all one area. But now that we have a larger rig we do have a bedroom that we can shut the door if we need to and have a little space and you can always go outside and sit on the patio if you need to be alone um, but you do need to consider that you relationships are impacted by being in a small space together for extended periods of time if you're traveling just with your spouse or your partner or you're traveling with them and children or it's just you and children a lot of RVers now are a single parent with children. 
you need to see consider how that small space is going to impact those relationships if you have children how are the siblings going to interact with each other how are they going to have their own place for their own stuff that kind of thing that's something to really consider because it can be very stressful in certain relationships um, to know that you're together all the time and a lot of times if you're especially if you're traveling and moving more often than we are your kids will not have a friend group their siblings will be their friend group which is not a bad thing but it is something to consider number five campgrounds are not always conducive to privacy or personal space a little, a little side note here I, I was in the office at cactus country one day and they got a phone call um and lucy one of the people that worked there I answered the phone and she was talking to the person and the person on the phone apparently asked her is there a lot of privacy and lucy's response was it's an rv park <laughs> you're not going to get a lot of privacy and that no truest statement has ever been no, said okay <laughs> and i mean you can you can look at our video about uh our neighbor's video about <laughs> people that kind of expose themselves inadvertently but it, it's not just that it's you, you're not I mean, if you're having an argument with your spouse everybody in the RV park is going to know about it and just like any community there are the people who think it's their business to tell everybody's business oh of course so. yeah I mean every every <laughs> RV park we've stayed in there's always been the mayor okay and <laughs> who appoints themselves in charge of all the news exactly so. <laughs> and they know everybody and they know everybody's business <laughs> and you know, also i mean some of these rv parks that you know aren't like 55 and over okay you're gonna have you could have crowding you could have a lot of noise throughout the day okay and that's just the way of life. I mean, a lot of people are just out camping, having a bit, little vacation, okay? And we're all in the same parks, the people out there camping and having a vacation and the full-time RVers, yeah. okay? So y you got to expect that and you got to understand that that's just normal. And if you can't, then... Quite honestly, it's probably not the lifestyle for you. Or, conversely, you would need to consider whether or not you want to stay in RV parks. You know, you may need to make sure that you're equipped to stay in a state park or boondocking or somewhere where you can be out away from other people. Right. Number four, if you are a type of person that doesn't deal well with weather extremes, either very, very cold or very, very hot, you may not want to consider being full-time in an RV. It's sometimes difficult in the summer in Tucson to get your RV cool enough to be really comfortable. We haven't had a lot of issues with it. We've been able to keep it at least comfortable enough through the afternoon, the peak heat times, that it's not miserable. But And there were a few days last summer that basically made us say that we never wanted to be in Tucson for the summer again. <laughs> yeah. Hence the reason we're in Cottonwood. But if you don't deal well with extreme cold or you don't deal well with extreme heat, you would need to consider if that's something you want to try and deal with or if you want to make sure you base your travels around the seasons and yeah. base where you're going to be at what time of the year. Like we would not want to be in Washington State in the, the fall or the spring when it's just rain, 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 rain. Right. But and we, we wouldn't want to be anywhere in the north where, when it's in, in the wintertime <laughs> because who wants to deal with that kind of snow and stuff? And Neither one of us care for snow at all. No. <laughs> um, we are not skiers and... Uh, <laughs> just not our thing but again you I've, I've said you know the the weather people in Tucson must live a very boring life because it's basically the weather's gonna be sunny and maybe some wind today <laughs> and it's it's they're basically reporting the temperature and those temperature extremes 
And last summer was the hottest summer on record in Arizona. And it was tough. And I'm hoping and praying that this summer is a little bit different. Because we're a little, we're further north. We're northern Arizona now. Yeah. So, um, but just consider that if you're thinking about full-time RVing and you pass all the other things that, that are not an issue for you, the weather is something to think about because you, you want to plan to be in places at the time of year that it's most conducive to what you want to be around. Number three, if financial stability and predictability is your jam <laughs> full-time RV life may not be for you RVs break down anybody who owns one or has ever owned one knows that and but you got to look at it also from the viewpoint of so do things in houses yeah okay if you're a renter something breaking down in your house not your problem somebody else takes care of it if you own your home it's on you and you have to factor that in with an rv and do your do your research and know what it's really costing people um, gas prices fluctuate um we've seen a big fluctuation in the price of of camping sites and RV park sites because in COVID there was a big surge of people going into RVs and so supply and demand created that higher pricing. We're hoping that now that people are divesting themselves of the RVs from COVID that they will kind of even back out. But right now some, some places the more popular tourist attractions and resorts are their prices can be exorbitant and and more than is really reasonable city just sent me a reel from instagram today about an rv park in in the keys key, yeah, west. key west yeah in key west they're charging six hundred dollars a day i can't even imagine it and, and i don't ever want to imagine it it was nice it, it's a beautiful beautiful i mean from your rv spot you could look out your window and there was the ocean and you had your own private pier, yeah, you had your own private outdoor living area. I'm, it was gorgeous. I'm never paying $600 <laughs> a day for an RV park. Uh, it was pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the beach person, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so just do your due diligence in researching pricing, where you want to go, how much gas you think you're going to be using, and keep those things in mind that prices do fluctuate after you get on the road so just be sure that you're prepared for that and it, it changes so much in what it depends on what you want to have in the bank it depends on how much you do have in the bank it depends on how much you have coming in how much you have going out so it's, it's very individual on the financial side so just keep those things in mind and some people will lead you to believe that hey i don't have to pay a house payment anymore and i don't have this that and the other and, and that was something i was going to say is is that you have to consider that there are expenses in an rv that don't exist in a house okay yeah you have to buy gas when you're living in a house for your car but you don't have to buy gas for traveling cross country yeah and towing an rv number two if you value stability and routine and like things to be the same day after day after day and some people thrive on that some people are don't do well outside their routine full-time rv living might not be for you if that is your temperament because it's unexpected things happen all the time your neighbors yeah. change <laughs> from week to week or day to day your um Environment. Spontaneity is not your is not a part of your regular language. <laughs> yeah. This isn't gonna work out. And also just being flexible about weather, being flexible about uh, plans. If you plan to go somewhere and do a certain activity or go to a certain attraction and it something happens that it's closed or something happens that it's weather 
related, you've got to be able to go with the flow, I guess that's what I'm saying, because if you're a person that thrives on routine and schedule and and I've, I've had friends that are like that, that everything is very scheduled out, everything from their kids to their husband to their job, everything is very routine, and that's what they thrive on, and that's what they like. And we all have friends like that. that you, know, you go in their house, and their whole refrigerator is filled with one big calendar with everything is mapped out. And that's fine. And a lot of times that's the way people have to be when you have a lot of kids and a lot of activities going on. You have to know what's going on. But if you don't function well outside of that routine, RV full-time living is probably not a great idea. Maybe do it on a planned vacation. But for always, every day, there's always surprises. There's always things that happen that you weren't expecting. And you have to be able to go with the flow. It's even on travel days, you may plan to go from point A to point B and something happens between there and or you see something else you'd rather go see in between and you make a detour and you don't get where you were going to go at a certain time. If you don't deal well with that sort of fluctuation, this might not be a good lifestyle for you. And the number one thing, and this is number one. Most important. Yes. If you're going to go full-time RVing and you're married or you have a, a full-time partner, you got to both be 100% on board. It can't be one of you trying to convince the other to embrace this lifestyle. We've seen that so many times. People venture out and, and one spouse is gung-ho and ready to go and all in and the other one is like eh. maybe I'll kind of give it a try we can try it but I'm not that crazy about not being able to take a 10 minute shower or they find something that's just really not something they can live with and then you've gone to all this trouble and expense and change in your life and it's not working out it can be very stressful on relationships and it, it, we've actually seen it where it ended a relationship. And it, it, you can't, you just can't do it. Don't do it. If you value your relationship and you're the one that's going, I'm ready, let's hit the road. And your partner is, as Cindy pointed out, kind of hemming and hawing about it. Dead stop. Maybe try it on the weekends. Try a couple of weeks on vacation. See if the, the other person might get completely on board. They might decide they love it. But it's not something that you want to go whole hog and get rid of everything you own and get in an RV and get on the road and then find out that it's, it's not for one person at all. Do you agree with these things that we've talked about? Are, are, are there any things that you can think of that maybe deal breakers are deal breakers? Yeah. Drop a comment below and let us know. And if you want to see that video that I spoke about earlier about the neighbors and the lack of privacy, check it out right here. <laughs>